the principle of when is enough enough. And what we're referring to with uh, this idea is a expression that I'd read uh, a number of years ago, and it is that good is the enemy of great. Now, what do we mean by that? Because, I mean, good is good, right? Let's say as a, a hypothetical that a person, you know, is seeking health care because their, their daily life function, let's say they're not doing well, they're really only able to do 30% about what their capacity is. And so you do a course of care, a course of treatment, and let's say that they get up to 70. So their life function has doubled. Awesome. You've done an absolutely amazing thing to be able to help this person out. They're doing really, really well and they're happy. But let's say hypothetically that we were, you know, dogmatic in our approach and we said, this is the one and only thing that you need to be well. So we negate all of the other branches of healthcare and of medicine and we say, nope, this is the only thing that you may need to do. Well, if 70% was your true maximum capacity, fair enough. But what if your true maximum capacity was actually 90%? What it means is it means that if we settle and say, you know, 70% from where you were, good enough, you might still be happy, but we actually haven't done you a service to get to your true optimum potential, whatever that might be. And so what this means is it means that, and this is a very, very fine line at times between um, over-servicing, that is doing too much, too many different things, taking a shotgun approach with it comes to your health, your well-being, and your healing, versus simply put doing too little. It's that what you are looking for as a general rule is the concept of a plateau. And so when the body is, when your body is doing natural, normal healing, number one, we have to respect cycles of repair. We have to respect seasons. We have to respect time. That things are gonna take time as your body is healing. But what we are looking for, even though there are ups and downs, we're looking at trends, say like this. And what we're looking for is we're looking for where your body hits a plateau. Even if a person may be healing slower than we may necessarily like or expect, if they are making forward step progresses, the wise thing to do, not necessarily a smart thing to do, but the wise thing to do is not to interfere. Trust the wisdom of your body to do the work. That is, until you hit a plateau, where despite doing all the same stuff that you have been, you're not making any additional forward progress. What it means, it means firstly that you've established a really good baseline so that even if, okay, you go the wrong way or you make a mistake after that, you can usually get that back pretty well, uh, back to your new standard. You've hit, set a higher bar for yourself. But what it does also is it means that it gives you the opportunity to start trialing a few different things to find out what's going to break through to get you to that next level. And it can and often is any number of different things. It can involve uh, physical care, it can involve uh, changes with your uh, nutrition, things in terms of your um, chemical or your um, dietary environment, and it could also involve necessary changes in terms of um, stress or in terms of mental or emotional factors, things along that line. But one way or another, the wise thing is to not intervene until you hit a plateau and usually to where you have been at that plateau for a period of at least two weeks, ideally longer, ideally around three months or so where you're doing well, you're doing well, but you've been at a plateau, you think you, and you know that you're capable of more, but then you need to do simply put something different. And it might be with the same healthcare practitioner, it just might need to be, okay, we need to make a little modification, tweak this, add that, do something different at that point. Or it may mean that you need another factor and that's actually gonna be the next step as part of the evolution of your health so that you can actually reach your true peak potential. And the caveat here is of course, you can't rush these things because as soon as you try to rush things, that's oftentimes where your body's just gonna give you a bit of a harsh rejection, say, no, 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 that was not what we actually needed. And then things go back down a little bit, but once you establish that strong baseline, then you are good. So simply put, my caution here is, and sometimes people wonder, okay, you know, why is it that, you know, different um, healthcare practitioners, professionals, doctors, you know, why do we do, you know, only one thing at a time? 
It's because what we're doing is we're trying to understand what actually does what so that we understand what you need. We understand what you need to get to a certain point, but then we should also always be cognizant about what do we need to do or what do you need to do to help get you to that next level so that we're not falling to the prey of good enough. Because what we ideally want for everybody, we want everybody, even if it's not 100%, we want everybody to be operating as close to 100% of their true potential as their body will allow.